Oh, hey, in this video, I thought I'd go through the electric version of Neil Young's great song, Cowgirl on the Sand. I know there are lots of ones on YouTube uh, covering the acoustic versions. Uh, Neil Young's performance on the four-way street um, is, is just a great one. But the electric version on Everybody Knows This Is Nowhere is it, so awesome, too, that it's fun to sort of play with. Uh, it's also instructive as a rhythm player when you're trying to deal with long instrumental breaks when you've got essentially two chords and to try to find ways to keep that interesting. So I'm going to come back and talk about that stuff and some of the voicings and then we'll go through all the different parts. But let me begin with the introductory, uh, the introduction to the song because there's some neat stuff that's, that's going on there and then we'll dive into the rest. Now the song starts off with this cool little sort of series of just finger picking, thinking about using various versions of an A minor. So you use an A minor, drop off the first finger so you've got an A sus2, grab the D so now you've got an A sus2. To now where you've got a version of a C with that D ring in, so it'll be adding a D note. Grab the G, does that for a bit. And then eventually move your way to the A minor. And we're off and running to the A minor and F transition, which we'll go to now. So the main instrumental breaks are just going to be using the A minor and the F. So you're going to want to use different things. First, you're going to want to be sort of messing around with the voicings of those chords, but also stuff with the right hand too. Uh, can't quite, quite get it on video all at once, but at times, sort of moving further down the neck and then up time, at times, pulling up high, so... that sound as opposed to lower down. So let's just go through some of the different ways in which you can give voice to the A minor. As we saw in the introduction, you can use the A sus 2 as well, where you've got the B ringing instead of the C. B minor, F, F, up at the 5th fret, A minor, use the D shape, get it all the way in there for your F here. Notice how similar those are. You know, the, chord, the, the notes for the A minor are A, C, and E. And for the F, it's F, A, and C. So. If we did an A up at the ninth fret, we'd have this. Take that C sharp, drop it down, and you get this. In other words, take a D minor and slide it all the way up, and then grab the C with the third finger, and you get the little D seventh shape on the fourth, second, and third strings. There's an A minor there. Play an F at the eighth fret. Here's a little inversion you can do as well, just to add some extra little flavor. Take the F chord, take the bar shape, and then have your lowest note be the third note in the chord, that is, have the A here. Just another way of breaking, sort of emphasizing the A, which is ringing and playing such an important role in this song, so it's sort of anchoring the A that way. That's the first thing you think about it. Different voicings, playing around with the A minor, moving back and forth between A minor and suspension uh, on the bar chord. <laughs> Hammer-ons and pull-offs while you're doing the chords. Another thing that's hard to break out in the video is thinking about using your right hand as well as your left hand to do some muting sort of think about sort of pumping out the chords, muting them with your right and your left, just to vary the rhythm, to keep it interesting. All right, so let me go through a run through that, 
uh, playing witness part. And I'm going to come back and we'll look at some of the, the stuff that happens in the actual verses in the chorus and then go through some of the stuff that Neil Young does in the solo and that he does. So when we turn to the verses and the chorus, we've got A minor, F, a little cowgirl in the sand, this is place at your command, so two times with A minor and the F, then C, G, F major 7th, so take the F and let the high E ring, G, do it again, C, Witten's part or Neil Young's part will be a pause and then the chord that wraps it up like a <laughs> then back from the F to the C E7 A and the nice thing on the first time they go through it there's that nice sort of pregnant pause So let me go through each of them in turn.
So then when we turn to what Neil Young is doing over that part, we got the D minor. It's woman and you make sure you want to play these games. So F, C, and then this little riff. So finally, let's look a little bit at what Neil Young's doing in the long solo breaks. Uh, I think it helps to think about beginning with just the A minor pentatonic scale. So A, C, D, E, G, A. Do some riffs in that, and then once you've got yourself sort of going, then think about maybe moving to the full A minor scale where we've got all natural notes. A, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And then think about just moving it up the neck and it's a good song to sort of practice getting comfortable with the patterns, however you go about thinking about soloing, whether you think about the patterns that you use, and the different places to use those patterns, or whether you're thinking about the notes that are going to be played. Uh, it's a good one just to get sort of comfortable with, in this case, looking for nothing but the natural notes. Don't have to worry about any sharps or flats. I think it will help. You can do it in the open position if you want, but part of what's distinctive about Young's soloing is the way he makes use of the tremolo bar. Um, if you don't have one, or even if you do, it's hard to get that sound. If you don't let the open strings ring, but fret them all, then you've got a chance to use some bends and some vibrato and different kinds of ways of getting a little bit more uh, of that kind of whammy sound that he, that he uses. So that's what I'd recommend. All right, so let's, let's play around with it a little bit. Thank <laughs> you. 